Uh, today, Nigerian workers join their counterparts around the world <laughs> to celebrate Workers' Day, uh, Labor Day, or also known as uh, the International Workers' Day. It's um, celebrated on May 1 every year in many countries around the world. This day is dedicated to working class and their contributions to society. The history and evolution of Labor Day is a story of the struggle and the triumph of labor movement. We have in the studio the spokesperson of the Nigerian Labor Congress, Mr. Benson Upa. Uh, it's nice to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. He's, um, I, was, yeah, I was saying that he looks like a Gen Z uh, worker representative <laughs> when he came into the studio. And that looks nice on you, by the way. Really? And of Thanks. course, we have uh, Dia Ugli, public affairs analyst and civil rights activist on gender. It's a pleasure to have you in the studio, man. It's nice having me here. Um, a beautiful compliment, if you like, uh, that we have in the studio. We will begin with you. Um, I dare to say, Mr. Benson, not for the purpose of uh, gender superiority, so that I don't fall foul Thank of you my very sister's much. Uh, 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 protection line. Yeah. Uh, it's another Workers' Day. Yes. Uh, and I'm sure uh, from here you'll be prepared to join all of the activities that have been lined up to celebrate today's um, Workers' Day, but uh, to put it straight, is there anything to celebrate about the 2023 Workers' Day if we take a quick x-ray of um, how workers have fed in the last eight years? Yes, thank you very much for this question. Um, no matter how badly things uh, uh, things have turned out to be somehow, somewhere. There is always something good, something, something nice. Uh, of course, for workers, it's been a tough period. Uh, but we are grateful to be alive. We are grateful to see this day. And uh, these are sufficient reasons to celebrate. Okay, but how would you say that the Nigerian workers have fared under the President Muhammad Buhari's administration? Well, um, I would say that the statistics speak for themselves. First, let me start with the negative. But do I start with the positive side of it? Either way. Okay. Um, at the moment, we have 131 million Nigerians considered to be multidimensionally poor. We have 40% unemployment rate and still growing. We have 53.4 of youth unemployment. We have 22.04 inflation rate from 21.9. We have um, a growing oil theft in the Delta. We have had a um, massive devaluation of the Naira. Uh, that has created uh, uncontrollable inflation, as I've mentioned earlier on. All these have negatively impacted on the wage capacity of the worker, everything about the worker. Energy bills, utility bills have been on the rise. In fact, reached a level now where, where, where no notice is given as required by law. You recall in those days, if, if they were going to take light, they would give you three to four days notice that light would be taken in so, so, so place. Now, nobody talks about that. Bills, the, 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 I mean, the entities that run the, the electricity distribution, just simply, pile of bills, the water board slams bills, all the utility agencies, 
all this have impacted very, very negatively and have reduced life to a bohemian, uh, uh, a, a hobbesian level. Life is mean, brutish, and short as it were. Mm, thank you. Um, coming to you. Uh, However, I finish your thought. Good. However, we should also be fair to this administration, to President Muhammad Buhari, in assessing and giving our own testament. When he came in, he approved the release of funds to the states to enable them offset the backlog of uh, salaries and pensions. Most of the governors that took this money put it to something else. They didn't use the money. They didn't apply the money. President Muhammad Buhari also In the period of uh, COVID, when I mean, when the I mean, if I, when the global outlook was bleak, the national outlook was equally bleak. He made sure that no worker was re no no worker was retrenched or laid off. Beside this, he approved the length of service for teachers from 60 years to 65 years. Mm. Recently, he has just approved a wage dash. These are some of the things that we should be appreciative of. And we're grateful to him. Mm. So it has not been one long night. Mm. So it has been night and day. This will be our take. It's good that you yeah. bring um, all of these perspectives to yeah. bear. Uh, with uh, Ms. Ugli, I he said something that is instructive. I I know the experience even for labor in Nigeria is not equal for the for the male and female. There seem to be some kind of discrimination lurking here and there. I will give you the opportunity to speak with that, given your background. But what has the experience been for you uh, from the point of observation between how some of the things the presidents have done for labor versus how the governors have behaved? And uh, to be fair, I would like to start with your own state governor, who is thinking of uh, giving himself some wonderful sign-off uh, in the name of uh, gratuity and pension for ex-governors in a state where teachers are owed cumulative salaries of well over 24 months in the last four years. What's your assessment of how governors have behaved when it comes to workers' welfare generally? Uh, thank you so much. I think the governors have behaved very responsibly uh, because uh, the, the bedrock of any society uh, lies with the workforce. Uh, like you rightly said, in my state where I'm from, the governor has been most insensitive to the flight, plight of the uh, average worker in the state. Teachers have gone months on ending without being paid, uh, there are no incentives for the workforce and there's just a natural feeling of irresponsibility towards the workforce. And it is totally unacceptable, it should not continue. Like you said, he's working on giving himself um, a lifetime uh, retirement plan and I ask myself how much work have you put in mm. to want to end so much for the rest of your life where the average um, worker has not been paid sometimes for years so it is actually quite irresponsible and should not be encouraged going forward. That's my take. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, a lot has happened in the past eight years, like you said. There are global dimensions to some of the issues that we are battling with in the country, especially if you look at the inflation. So uh, I would, I would uh, direct this to you now, Mr. Benson. All the interventions of the government, yes. how effective are they, really? in the face of all this, all that we have seen in terms of the inflation rates? 
And then I would also go further to say, as regards the minimum wage, where are we? Have we seen 100% implementation yet? Well, thank you very much for this question. Well, um, as per the issue of interventions, we should try to yeah we should yeah we should try to scale this up. This stage, this federal government you're looking at, or you or we assume that this is all federal for, for government. both of them because no, we are talking them. about workers in uh, the entire country. Uh, for both of them, yes. Well, I I will I will start with the federal government. Uh, the federal government uh, put in place palliative measures, uh, some of them which are directly under the Minister of, uh, of uh, the Social Welfare, the no, humanitarian. humanitarian welfare, and so on and so forth. And uh, the, uh, they gave out um, sums of money to some individuals. They said they are indigent individuals. Uh, in, indigent individuals. Um, there were other initiatives, including anchor borrowers and things like this. And the ones that, well, some people benefited from the anchor borrowers initiative. But what I would say generally is that, uh, that the spread and the depth of what they did weren't good enough. People are giving are giving the volume of a population uh, more should have been uh, more should have been given more resources should have you been know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm pointing to this because yes uh, there are several interventions by the federal government yes. and you could even say that in in the past I mean perhaps we've not seen a government that have had the highest number of social kind of mm -hmm. social welfare mm -hmm. interventions mm -hmm. like we've seen in this country but mm. you mentioned that we have over 100 million nigerians 133 yes. million nigerians yes. multi-dimensionally poor yeah. so it means that with all these interventions yes. are we really seeing the desired results and if not where are we not getting it right well let me say that first and foremost i'm not the spokesperson of of, uh, of this administration but let me say that uh, as you pointed out it was thoughtful of the administration to have even contemplated uh, interventions as, as it were. Uh, however, as I said earlier on, those interventions were not sufficiently uh, widespread or deep enough. And there were complaints. You remember at a point that the National Assembly caused, uh, we call it an investigation, okay? That was suggestive of dissatisfaction with the implementation. Okay? So, at that level, I would say, yes, the intentions were good, but, but the implementation or the implementations were not sufficiently good. And time has come, in light of this, time has come for us to reflect. What did we do right? What didn't we do right? Okay? So these, for me, are the issues that we should begin to look at. The other leg because. of the question is about the minimum wage and, and its implementation. Yeah, the minimum wage. Yeah, the minimum wage uh, came into effect in November 2019. And uh, quite unfortunately, even though my sister here said the governors did well, no. I, I hold... this man. No? Yes, I thought I heard I say that. Uh, no. eh? I thought no. I heard you say that the governors were that they performed well. No. Okay. No, you heard wrongly. Just okay. give us your take. Anyways. Okay, fine. So, um, quite unfortunately, some of the governors obeyed this law in the breach. The national minimum wage issue was and still remains a law. Okay, and all the strata of governments from the local government, state government, to the federal, they were expected to obey this law. It was and still remains a national law. And in most countries of the world, in most countries of the world, 
the national minimum wage is the benchmark below which no employer is allowed to pay. Most, most organizations, most states pay above the national minimum wage in the United States and where this law is having its practice. But quite unfortunately, many governors took delight in violating this law. They not pay. And some that paid, they paid in tranches. So, and by so doing, they deepened the poverty in their states. Now, let me share this story with you. I had an encounter with, yeah, with a governor in the Northwestern state who wanted to stop paying the minimum wage. And I told him, I said, do you know why there is relative peace in your state? Let me tell you. It's because there is relative prosperity. See, there is, there is a nexus between prosperity and security. All right. once, once you take out this, min when, once you stop paying, your state will descend into a state of anomie, like the contiguous states. All right. Um, at the risk of um, interjecting with your thoughts, I would like uh, Mr. Blade to intervene, uh, but in a different sort. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about uh, a time for introspection. Whenever we look at the budget, one of the things that keep growing on the budget is the recurrent expenditure. Wherein lies uh, the personnel, the budget for personnel in mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigerians who are neither employed by the state or federal government keep wondering whether they are a part of this country because it appears that a chunk of what we earn as a country is used in servicing civil servants. And the arguments are in two folds. It feels like a very small size of our population seem to take everything that we earn as a country. And secondly, it also feels like Nigerians, you and I who are not in public and civil service, do not get value for some of these payments that are made. And they also feel like there is just too many of them, in fact, that we can do with just a third of the size of our civil service. What's your take on these arguments out there? Um, looking at it very critically, uh, the arguments out there are quite in order. They're in place. Because when you look at it, in all the economies of the world, Nigeria happens to be one of those that have the highest the recursive. yes and it is not trickling down um when you amass so much for so little the average man the average worker does not feel the impact in public service for example we have all manners of schedule mm. that ought not to be these schedules could be collapsed if we are looking at public service the world over there are different arms of governance public service that ought not to be so multifaceted and in being multifaceted it comes with a lot of expenditure which could you know, ordinarily, I don't know if that's the word I should use, but which could best be put to other uses. And those uses could affect day-to-day -day lives of the workers. He was saying something about, you talked about palliatives and things. What, what, what would have stopped the government you know how many staffs you have by establishment? It failed because it didn't go through the right channels. In this establishment, we know how many people are employed here in. Take this establishment for example. Palliatives want to come in here. You know who gets what and who shouldn't get what. You don't just make it on a blanket, you know, it's, it's the palliatives were distributed from Australia to Togo. Mm. 
mm. from America. It was a global thing. So why was ours different? Bureaucracies. And this has to be um, looked into very critically in the years to come, especially as we are transiting from one administration to the onto the other. Mm. Okay. Yes, I'd like to respond to the issues you just mentioned. Okay, okay. Um, first, I hold a contrary view that that so much is given to those in the public service to the exclusion of others. First, I do agree that uh, in, in, in relation to the overall population, those, who, those, those in the public service uh, are relatively uh, a, minor, a, a relative minority. Mm -hmm. But I do not believe that the allocations to those career public servants are the issue. Because the facts, the facts and figures are there. How much is voted for their wages? First of all, how many are they? Yeah, we're talking about a country of about over 200 million. How many people are in public service? If you do a census of this. Maybe 40 million or so, 50 million. How no. many workers do you have, you know, no. attached to so, an office? So, so, so just a moment. If you, do, if you do a census of this, you'll be surprised. And let's, take this, and let's take the example of the police. We are told that we are under-policed. Mm -hmm. We are under-soldiered, under-soldiered too. We are virtually, practically, in all the services, our numbers in relation to the public. Our the numbers population. are low. But look at, the, look, at, look at how much is actually voted. Mm -hmm. So the issue is not this career public servants. The issue is those, is the political heads. Okay. So I'm coming, just a moment, just a moment. If you get to look at how much those political heads take, you'll be shocked. So it, no, I mean, the fact is there in the open. Go and take a look. What is the, I mean, I mean, what percentage does the salary of this, or do the salaries of these uh, entities constitute? Okay, well, I, I think that the argument is about how much does the ordinary Nigerian benefit mm -hmm. from, from the national exactly. cake, sort exactly. of, the quote, unquote, In quote. national <laughs> cake. So, uh, <laughs> my co talked about when we look at the budgetary allocations, yes. and for most times, you see that, um, st uh, what do you call, uh, a recurrent expenditure takes a chunk of, of, it. of it. And, and, you and then we're not, and, and we're not going to, we're not going to, and we're not going to separate it no, I will not let from you career and, and, and non-career. You don't see that much investment in terms of capital infra, uh, capital projects it, that, that is meant to benefit the More. larger population and then, you know, of the people. But let me, let me come in, let me bring it down to the NLC, for instance. Yes. For most times that we talk about welfare of staff, it's always almost about people in the public service. Mm -hmm. How much attention or how much focus is given to private sector workers, for instance? I mean, it, we, we have people who work hours on end today, some of them without salaries, you know, some of them their employers That's pay nice. at will. will. Sometimes there is no, res no, no, there's, labor there's no arrangement for, you know, their perhaps pensions I mean, or health, respond, I mean, health schemes that. and yeah. the rest yeah. of wait, wait. So, I, so, so I, as a labor union, yes. how much attention do you give, does the labor union give to people in the private sector? To its members. First right? and foremost, I it's think there is... Exactly. First and foremost, I think there is a misuse of term here when you say private sector. Hmm. I mean, the private sector is better organized than the public sector. Okay. But we're talking labor please, in general. Please, listen, madam, listen. Hmm. The, I mean, the private sector is better organized and better paid than, uh, than people in the public sector. Except well, you... That's, ex that's uh, no, no, except, that can be debated, no, no, really. No, no, except, we have no listen, listen, listen. I'm, no, I'm trying, no, no, I'm trying to explain something to you which will be ahead, useful please. to you. Mm. Except you are talking about the informal sector. If you are talking about the informal sector, where the rules are a little bit uh, on, um, on steady, sometimes there are no rules at all. That you may have a point there, but if you're talking about the organized private sector, I mean, the organized private sector prides itself as, as 
um, as a gold, as a golden eye of the of everything. Okay, so 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 I mean so I mean so the people. In fact, let me tell you when you talk because it's almost almost almost. Uh, there's a very tell thin me, line between. Tell the, me, tell me, tell me the, any, tell me any employee the, the, in the private, in the, organized private sector who is not paid. And there's is a very thin line between the informal sector nowadays and the, the organized public. private sector mm -hmm. because it's almost difficult to say, oh, this is to organized. Be able to private. So you, you take teachers, for instance, who work in private, private schools. schools, for instance. You say they are working in a private, or you say they are working in organized private sector. And if you see some of the treatments of these teachers in private schools, you know, sometimes it's really nothing to I mean, be proud of. It leaves a lot to be yes. desired. Just so to add that's to just that an point, instance. Would you, you say they are working in informal sector mm. now, or how? Just to give you one more example, the banks, casualization of staffs, contract, mm -hmm. contract mm -hmm. appointments that, that denies them of pension, denies them of health insurance benefits and they work under very severe so how do we how do does the structure we have today better serve the interests of workers in those kind of establishment well if you are talking about inherent labor issues in certain organizational spaces mm. that is a different matter we can deal with that but if you are saying that that the organized private sector is um, is a marginalized sector. I will keep telling you. I say no. That the organized private sector, Shell and the rest, they all part of the organized private sector, mm -hmm. yeah. and they are very, 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 very in terms of pay remuneration and those. They are way ahead of the public, uh, I mean the public sector. But if you are now restricting your question to unhealthy labor practices in certain entities in the private sector. I will agree with you. Like the banks, for instance, yes, we have had massive cases of casualization in the banks, and we'll be tackling this. We have, we have that in the construction industry, we'll be tackling this. In fact, um, in the most recent of the unions by the president of the of the, of the Congress, Congress Joajero, he made it amply clear to the unions that he visited. Say, look, we are reconstituting the anti-casualization committee to drive home the message that casualization is not allowed. It's not the right way to go. So, Congress has consistently taken a very strong view of unhealthy labor practices like casualization. What about remuneration? What about so benefits? if you're talking about remuneration in the yeah. private sector, you know, and I'm telling you, take this from me, take this from me. Even the banks where, I mean, where you have unhealthy practices, if you're looking at the issue of the pay, they pay better. But casualization is an issue. Pension but, issues are an issue. They pay better. better. So, so, no. so, so try to separate them. Mr. No, no, no. Benson, yeah, exactly. Uh, we seem to be lumping up things, mm -hmm. really. And uh, I think that it will help us in the conversation if we, you know, not talk about maybe banks or maybe... We are just talking no, about unhealthy... You mentioned it, unhealthy labor practices. And that exists... You know, but that was not the direction of your question. Uh, uh, that was me. not the direction of your we, question. We are talking about unhealthy labor practices, whether in the informal sector, whether in the organized private no. sector, like you put no. it. Unhealthy labor practices exist in different places. But what I'm saying is that the attention of labor, for instance, seems to be more focused on people working in the public sector. Each time there is... That is not uh, true. That, well, that's why you are here. That is not true. Each time there is that disagreement is between government, that's that is where we true. hear labor. But exactly. how about people that who, is are not not working, who are not working in that the public is not true. service? So, and that's why you're that, here. That, no, no, you tell us. I will, you, and I will you, tell you. Just so, so I'm so listening and I will tell you. The focus of listen, labor, even, how let me tell you. has been done see, to look at, say, for instance, I'm giving an instance with schools now, for instance. Private schools now, for instance, where you see this unhealthy labor practices. What is the labor doing in that regard? 
Are you ready to listen to me now? Go ahead. First and foremost, um, the private sector unions are as many, if not more than the public sector unions that constitute the umbrella known as, as NLC. Hmm. That should tell you that NLC is a broad-based labor center, the leading pan-Nigeria pan organization. So any issue that affects any of these unions, NLC takes it upon itself. You see, um, NLC does not even have any choice. The issue of the banks, we have fought and we're still fighting. The issue of the teachers that you mentioned, yes, we have a union known as the Nigerian and Union of Teachers. And the TUC. But, but also take note, it is often easier for NLC to intervene where there is a union. Okay? It's always easier. Where there is no union, what NLC does is to encourage unionization. Okay? So, but there must, oftentimes, there has to be that initiative of having a union. And take note, take note of this too. If those who are negatively affected, like like I mean, like you mentioned, teachers in private uh, private uh, institutions and so forth, if they do not show any inclination of forming a union, or if they do not run to NLC, NLC will not throw itself. No, but NLC should go to them. Label. Why you not? See, why yeah. not? Why, uh, why not? Uh, the, okay, the, so the, I have this question. As, why as, not? Ask me. Ask I ask me. this question as follow up, and yes. I would like to start with uh, Mr. Gray to to sort of offer a perspective, and and, and perhaps you you find the room to respond. One of the other grievances held by several other Nigerians who are not members of the NSC, either by affiliation or directly, is the fact that. In the recent years, the NSC has also made itself a tool against reforms that are considered to be in the general public interest, yes. but not in the interest of the NSC because some of its staff members will be retrenched. Like, we know Mention how... Uh, 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 that's what I'm saying. I, I've said, like, I wanted to end with an example. Yeah. Like, reforms in the oil sector. The NSC has completely stood against any attempt at privatization, any attempt... At uh, uh, a, 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 con a conversation okay. around subsidy removal and all of that, because for them, I mean, uh, the privatization, because for them it will lead to retrenchment. But we have now had refineries where people have moved from ordinary staff to directorate position between the year 2000 and today without those establishments producing any ounce. Of, of petroleum. Is that the kind of economy that will sustain the plight of workers? Or is that what we yearn for? I would like your perspective uh, on that before he responds. But, but You've been talking for a while. Well, I just want a perspective. Uh, okay. as, as, Much as, more than uh, anything else, uh, taking it from the stance of the NLC, I think the NLC has fallen short. I'm sorry to say. You're entitled because, to your opinion. Because much more than anything else, when we talk about labor, we're talking about Everybody who is engaged in service provision, service provision, organized, unorganized, formal, informal. That's why it's called labor. Whatever arm, it is the, um, the, 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 the responsibility of the labor council or whatever to, to look out for them. Be it the vulcanizer, he said something, they always want to, you know, work around unions. But then, what if they, they, they don't even know? What if they don't know? Everybody must not be, uh, you know, a, a white collar uh, labor provider before you identify with them. And then, and then, like you rightly said, using, quoting you, the, the, you know, a bit of the national cake. It's not done in, you know, in other economies. Even third world economies like us, it's not done in Ghana. 
So for crying out loud, Nigerian Labour Congress. Congress, as it is, has um, not actually lived up to its responsibility when it comes to um, uh, yes, well. that's one. Two, like um, you asked the question, they have been compromised because they look at it like, oh, if this happens, if we delve into this more, our members are going to be out of jobs. So they're not even looking at the overall benefit for all Nigerians. For all Nigerians. You took, um, you know, a, you know, a piece out of the bulk by saying oil subsidy, privatization. What are these bringing to the table for us? As the labor, you should go into that Nitty gritty. Excuse me. Oh, okay. No, for all Nigerians. All right. So let's uh, give this time to. Well, well, uh, well thank you very much, uh, Madam. You'll be most uh, callous with your language, <laughs> but uh, I will not uh, respond in the same whatever <laughs> that will be compromised. That uh, we would not live up to expectations. Uh, all of that. Yet, if if a leaf drops today, you will say, where is labor? Why don't you call another organization if you've not been living up to our expectations? But I mean, I mean, but coming to the specific issues that the two of you have raised, you talked about uh, saying that we have been anti-reform. Well, that is an unfair comment. We have not been anti-reform, but we are not for fraudulent reforms. You see, yeah, with, yeah, with the collapse of the bipolar world, in the late 80s and early uh, 90s, market took uh, a predominance, took, took, took an eminent position, I mean, virtually across the world, including Nigeria. And, what, uh, and when they started market reforms here, we said, learn your lesson from what has happened in other climes. Don't just become, don't just go market because Going market is the fad of the moment. If you can wrap up, sir. Because and they didn't listen. No, this is very fundamental. Yeah. Give me time. Yeah, they didn't listen. We don't have the time. That's but the thing. So, so just they, in one they, minute, they didn't listen. I, I mean, I mean, they privatized energy. What do you have today? We have the discos. What What do you have today? And then two, they say that you say that say that we're, I mean that we're against. Uh, I mean the I mean the privatization of the I mean of the oil sector. We said no, we are not. We said for you. For you to privatize or to deregulate the downstream sector of the oil something, do A, B, C, D. Build refineries, fix these refineries. Let there be competition between publicly owned refineries and the privately owned. As I speak with you, we have done documents, well researched documents and submitted to government or what to do. Subsidy. Subsidy is a scam. Even the president, before he, before he was sworn in president, said that he didn't believe in subsidy. Okay. Just a moment, just a moment. So, okay. uh, subsidy, and for those of you who, and for those of you who are advancing, I mean, I mean, who have become converts of market uh, a fundamentalism, it is coming. I mean, when right. you start buying fuel at the, at the price of 1,000 right. Nare liter, you, you, you start appreciating you the General Labor Congress. Thank you very much, Mr. Benson. I wish we had more time to continue to drill into several space. Uh, I just need to put on record that there are various uh, perspectives on these issues and, and arguments, uh, and all of us seek a better Nigeria, regardless of what side of the divide we are sitting. Thank you very much for showing up, Mr. Benson. I hope we will have time to continue this conversation uh, after today. Uh, Mrs. Ogley, thank you very much for showing up and for bringing this team.